Watermelon for everybody. Keep it going for Will from the stage now. Come on! In the fall of 1981, uh, my parents were enrolled in the Verscher School. It was an alternative boarding school in the wilderness of Vermont. It was basically just a bunch of hippies in the woods. Uh, my mom saw my dad at a party and told her best friend, hands off, that one is mine. Uh, so my mom has always been a bit of a flower child. Her favorite colors are denim and tie-dye. And uh, before uh, Jerry Garcia passed away, she went to 94 Grateful Dead concerts just to like, you know, that's who we're dealing with. And my dad at 16 was a wealthy Venezuelan exchange student who uh, quickly earned a reputation for being sort of a bad boy, uh, drinking, smoking dope, and getting into all kinds of trouble. So my dad lasted one semester at school before he got kicked out, something about stealing a car and driving it to New York. And a couple weeks after he left, my mom found out that she was pregnant. Uh, fun fact, I was told that I was conceived on a keg of Genesee cream ale. <laughs> to this day, I've never tried that beer and I probably will go to my grave that way. Uh, but my dad was already back in Venezuela and my mom had no way of getting a hold of him, but she was crafty and she broke into the school's office and went into his manila folder and got his phone number and address and she calls him and says, I'm pregnant and my dad completely freaks out and says, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? My mom says, I don't know what I'm gonna do but I know that I'm gonna have a child. And my dad says, just keep in touch and tell me what you decide to do. So, um, my mom is a bit of a spiritual person. Uh, I don't, I'm not that way, I've never fully understood, but after I was born, she, she tells me that uh, God told her to have this child, and so at the age of 17, my mother becomes my mother, and um, she calls my dad to tell him, but doesn't get through, and she tries him again, doesn't get through, and writes a letter, no response. Um, this went on for about, 10 years, and I'm getting older and older. I'm starting to ask more questions, my curiosity about my father and his whereabouts and my whole other side of me start growing and growing, and, and my mother just didn't have these answers. Um, so uh, unbeknownst to me, around my 10th birthday, she writes this big, long, rambling 10-page letter just saying what a good kid I am, uh, how much I've grown all about me, you know, assuring him that we're not asking for money or financial support, but you know, if he's out there, he needs to know that there is a kid and uh, he has questions. About two months later, she gets a phone call. Uh, what actually ended up coming up was uh, the address that my mom had was to my father's parents' house and they received every single letter. My dad, when he went back to Venezuela, kept on getting into more and more trouble, something about drugs, something about international travel, and my grandparents, who didn't really want my dad to have a legal way to get back to the United States, acting in his interest and probably ours, hid and destroyed all the letters, but on that day when I was 10 years old, he just happened to be visiting them and he just happened to pick up the mail. He calls my mom, he flies to New York three days later. My mom goes down to New York City, uh, gets reacquainted, and the very next day my aunt takes me out of elementary school a little bit early. And, um, we take the Metro North down to Grand Central Station, and it's such an interesting cocktail of emotions. You know, all we had uh, growing up was this one photo of my dad from Verscher. He had this long hippie hair, a bandana, blue sunglasses inside, and a red solo cup. <laughs> and I just remember going on that train, for some reason I just knew that that photo, even though I had questions, they were like a finite package of questions, and I know that that was all gonna be blown up. So we walk out into the atrium of Grand Central Station, and I look up immediately, I'm a little kid, and all the constellations on the ceiling, and I walk out under cancer, the crab, that's my sign, and uh, I say, I you know, tap my aunt, and I'm pointing up, and out of nowhere, this huge man reeking of cologne grabs me and picks me up off the ground, but I can't see him because my arm and and, uh, and, and uh, neck are so pointed upwards. But finally he puts me down on the ground and that was a moment I met my dad. Thank you.